Hi everyone and welcome to Brains Magazine. My name is Stefan Eng and I'll be your podcast host today. In this episode we will talk about the online travel agencies and why they might not be the trustworthy choice for you at all times. If you're in the travel industry, you can also join the Travel Employees Networking Group in LinkedIn with another 50,000 members from around the globe. You can find other episodes of my podcast in the website travelemployees.com. Very much welcome. Hi everyone and welcome to the third episode. Today I have another guest uh, and that is uh, Johanna Robinson Alto who is an expert in travel. Well, thank you Stefan. Uh, expert and expert, not so sure about that, but I've been in the travel industry for a very very long time since 1987 when I walked into a travel agency the first time. And then from there, I've been working both in Scandinavia and in the US in different organizations, travel agencies, uh, global distribution systems, like we say, uh, Sabre and Amadeus. Uh, so over 30 years in the industry. So maybe I have something to add, possibly. <laughs> we'll see. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that you have a lot to contribute with. And I'm very, very happy uh, to have you here in the show, uh, Johanna. And uh, as I've said before, when we talk about this show, I hope that we will uh, have the possibility and invite you uh, for further shows as well. Well, I need to ask you, I, I just almost forgot it. You and I have been working together at Amadeus for many years now, but I, I have also personally experienced from Travelport, both from Wordspan and also from Galileo. So we have a GDS focus here. Absolutely. <laughs> in this show. <laughs> I think we've covered all of them <laughs> yeah. between us. Yeah, I think so too. Mm -hmm. Right. So, yeah, but one thing that I've forgot really is actually, you said that you were working in the US for a while. Do you just uh, tell the audience on what you did there, etc. Well, I worked in a corporate travel agency for about seven years in New York, a pretty large corporate travel agency. Um, and the interesting about that travel agency was that we actually had five different reservation systems that we worked with, which uh, made us pretty uh, competitive. We didn't just use one GDS, we used five different in different departments in that organization. And we had large accounts like Russell Renner's MTV, Viacom, um, and all sorts of smaller uh, companies as well as our customers. Um, right. So that's what I did there. Interesting. Mm. Also interesting with five GDSs. That's mm. not so usual in a business travel agency, not even in Scandinavia as well. No, not anymore. Not and I, there aren't even, I would say, five left today. Uh, but uh, I was around when Pan Am was still around. Uh, so we had Panamac, it was called. And we had System One, which was then part of Amadeus, which was continental at that one time, I think it was. And we had, uh, not Worldspan, but it was called PARS in the US, yeah, which Pars, was Northwest yeah. Orient and TWA. And then we had um, Apollo, which it was called in the US, not Galileo, um, which was then United Airlines. And then we had Sabre, American Airlines. All right. Did you yeah. ever try to uh, Gabriel? Yeah, uh, we, Gabriel? I think we had one, uh, one computer sitting in a corner. Uh, and I think our leisure department mostly used that one. But no one else touched it <laughs> okay <laughs> all right okay johanna uh, nice to have you here thank you very much for coming now today we are supposed to discuss a little bit about the online travel agency concept because it's all about trust i think yeah, when when people are going on their holidays or even business trips or whatsoever but then things go wrong and and sometimes you you can't even reach to the online travel agencies because they don't, as I see it, 
uh, want to have any contact with the customers. Of course, some of them uh, are good at that uh, and do so, but there is a lot of crazy stuff out there. What, what, what do you have to say on this subject? Well, I think, um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting here pondering of how, how long uh, the OTAs, which we call them, online travel agencies, uh, have been around and um, how it all started. Because I think it's, it's the reason why it's so hard to get a hold of it on an online travel agency to actually speak to a person is their whole business uh, structure is set to cut costs uh, and having personal uh, people taking calls uh, costs money and so how do you increase your profit and cut cost well you remove the highest the highest cost there is which is the human being um, making a salary um, so online travel agencies i would say personally just a, a one direct flight, for example, I would never personally use an online travel agency if I had to uh, use different airlines with connections. Because just like you've written in your article, if something goes wrong, it's going to be hard to get someone to help you. So, so personally, I think I, but maybe this is also because we've been in the industry for so long that um, personally, I would refrain from using them unless it's just a one way round trip with one carrier. So good for that, uh, possibly not good for longer trips, overnight stays, where if you want to have a car rental hotel package, I wouldn't, wouldn't go with an online travel agency. All right. Uh, just just uh, to make a little clarification here, the article that you were referring to, it is an article that I wrote uh, a year ago, uh, and it's available in brainsmagazine.com. Uh, and you can uh, search for my name, Stefan Eng. Uh, there you have the article there. Now, so far, you have been talking about things when, when, when you book and everything goes fine, etc. But mm. when things go wrong, uh, and I have some experience, uh, which I also mentioned in this article, uh, and that is when I, I had a ticket booked for my daughter uh, coming back from Australia via Dubai. And then the second leg from Dubai to Stockholm was cancelled. And the online travel agency in Matter told me via email that uh, my daughter had to uh, pay that overnight stay herself and it was uh, not for them to bother with. Now, I didn't think that was correct, so I called the airline and of course the airline said, no, no, that's not correct. Uh, it should be uh, fixed by us. And, and uh, so she just had to go to the counter and, and we fix it for her. And that is also what happened. Do you have any experiences like that? No, not personally, but I, of course, have heard people having similar experiences. And, and, and I think that you and I that have been in this industry for a long time, we know that that was not the correct answer that you were given. If you have a, a through fare from one city via another city to a third city with the same carrier, we know that if the second leg is cancelled, that the, it is the airline that needs to provide a hotel overnight stay. But a lot of people that have not been in the industry like you and me might think that that is the case uh, and might then go and, okay, accept that first answer that they were given and pay for that hotel themselves. Uh, which is, of course, uh, it's going to be different depending on what uh, what OTA or online travel agency you're using, of course. Uh, but it's it's a shame when you are given that type of answer, and I think that I, that is not giving the online the OTAs a good reputation. No, I agree too, totally to that. Uh, that is also why why I personally never go that path to book. 
Of course, I can use the OTAs or the, the, the sites like Momondo or whatever to check mm -hmm. out prices, uh, etc. But then I book elsewhere, actually. That, that is uh, what happened nowadays. And unfortunately, I have the same experience from, from the hotel perspective as well. The hotel brokers, um, uh, mm -hmm. like, uh, well, don't mention too many names here, but, but still, it, it, it's a problem. They don't want to talk with you as a customer. And, mm -hmm. and probably because of the same reason as, as the online travel agencies or OTAs. Now, um, I saw some time uh, ago that there were some of these OTAs that actually offered the customer to pay for the possibility to call them when they had a problem. Yes, I've seen that as well. <laughs> You've seen that as well. <laughs> yeah, I've seen that Isn't as well. Isn't it fantastic? Isn't mm. it fantastic? Mm. I mean, but that's another it... way for them to make the money. Um, mm. They offer, they think they offer very cheap fares uh, or hotel stays um, and probably have a very, very small mar margin um, of profit on that on that hotel night or on that uh, that airfare so so another way for them to make money is to have these auxiliary <laughs> um, uh, costs that you would have to pay so you would have to pay for that personal service if something goes wrong you have to speak to a person you would have to pay for it instead of maybe what you and i would have done from the start used maybe not an OTA and paid a higher price for that ticket initially. It's all about making that money. Yeah, but do you, do you uh, as an individual, um, do you justify the way that they are operating this business? <laughs> that, that is a complex question. How do you... <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, to, in order to make money, for a travel agency today, I think either you go the OTA way, you cut as many costs as you can. Uh, the, we know the airfares today are extremely cheap. They're way too cheap for anyone to make any money on, on, on airfares today. Um, or you become a travel agency that are an expert. You have your niche, You're an expert on a certain type of, of travel. Uh, for example, you you only do cruises or you specialize in a specific destination where you become the expert. And that's where you can then charge. People will pay for, for your expertise in that particular uh, city or, or whatever that niche is. Another way, is, I think, for the OTA, like the OTAs, is that... Uh, you have it's like a mass production. You sell many, many, many tickets uh, at a low cost, but you will charge for all of that extra. If someone wants to call and speak to someone, that's going to cost you. If you know just trying to book something, it's going to have a, you know they try to sell additional. Um, insurances that try to sell additional things on their website just to 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 make money. When we started in the industry, you couldn't fly, for example, from Stockholm to Gothenburg for fifty-seven crowns, which my son just did the other day. It's ridiculous. No one's making any money off a fifty-seven crown ticket. So uh, somewhere they've got to make that money. And they'll may an OTA will then make it on on that uh, additional service that they will offer. And for for the record, fifty seven crowns it's almost like six euros something like. That. Now, okay, so um, so it's a matter of choice here that the customer mm -hmm. has. Uh, but do you think that they know that this is a a, a challenge that there will be a challenge if they haven't paid for the service to call them? Uh, and uh, then you all of a sudden can't do it. No, I think a lot of people don't know that. Um, and most of the times your travel will go as planned. 
Uh, it's in those cases when something goes wrong and you actually do need to speak to someone. Some people might know that there is a risk. They'll take that risk um, and everything will be fine and they, they will never have to speak to anyone. They'll get on that flight and they will arrive where they're supposed to be on time. Um, and you take that risk because of that cheap fare that you got. Some people I don't think even know, like you're saying, they don't know that if there is a problem, I'm not going to get a hold of anyone. So I think that, that's, a, you and I know, we've been around for, for a while, but I, a lot of people might not know mm. that that is the case. And is there anything to, to do about that, do you think? Or, or um, I mean, if, if I were an OTA and I want to sell the, the facility to, to call them if something go wrong, mm. wouldn't that be, you know, one of the first things that's on the, on the screen when you're buying this and it turns up immediately? Uh, that would be nice, but then you might lose that customer and that customer might go someplace else. I think so. Yeah. Possibly. 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 <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a tricky one. Yeah. Yes. It's a, another thing that I'm really uh, wondering about, and that is the chat tools. That, yes. Uh, <laughs> that agencies, in, not only in the travel industry, but the, but also other industries, uh, uh, the, you you uh, you have an opportunity to chat with someone you think. But it turns out to be a, a bot somewhere uh, stating that, uh, okay, uh, we will be with you in a few hours with the answer. And while you are waiting, uh, check out these articles of something to completely different. What, or have you, have or, you seen that? Well, uh, yes. And uh, I personally, I usually try them out just to test to see do they even understand the question I have? Most of the time, I would say they don't. You get an answer that was not the answer to my question. <laughs> and then you get the question asking, did this help? And you ask, you answer no. Um, and then, you know, I give up and I'll try to get in contact with who, some other way. And like you're saying, it's not just an OTA. We see these bots everywhere. Now, it, I think we've just started seeing these. I mean, how many years have we seen different bots uh, on different sites? Not that many years. And I think eventually they will get become more intelligent. Uh, I mean, if we're using artificial intelligence and they are teaching these bots at the same time, based on the answers or the questions that they get, if, if that if they're going to improve. It, of course, it's going to take years. But it, I, when you and I were at Amadeus, we had just, um, I don't know if you remember the, the new bot. Um, yeah, what was her it. name? I can't remember her name now. It was a woman <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, and she just could answer very, very basic questions. And at that time, this was about three years ago, at that time, there was no plan to use AI to teach the bot to learn from the answer it got. It was basically a dumb bot. Um, so that one's never going to improve unless you start using AI to teach the bot. And then it will, you know, I, th I think, give it to 10 years. And I think they're going to be much smarter than they are today. Right okay. now, I think they're a nuisance. So let's come back <laughs> to that subject in 10 years then. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think it's kind of ridiculous. I mean, the, the whole travel industry is based on actually the meeting, people meeting mm -hmm. each other, uh, True. going to different places. You go, I mean, previously you went to the travel agency, you had a coffee over the counter and, and discussed the travel uh, that mm -hmm. you were going to do, the, the journey. Uh, and, uh, but that's the thing. In those days, it was a journey, maybe a journey, uh, the journey yeah, you made exactly. in, in life. That's today, that's not the case today. No, people... Uh, travel so much more. It's become much cheaper. And as we've seen now uh, during COVID, uh, how people after now, when you can travel again, 
it's like people feel that they have the right, everyone has the right to be able to travel as much as we did before, pre-COVID. And I'm thinking sometimes, is that the way, you know, that, that meeting that you were talking about, that experience that you get from that trip, that one trip you're taking, uh, what happens with that when you travel five or six or seven times a year? Uh, mm. Will you have the same experience? Will you remember the same things? I don't think so. It's become as you, you know, you take the commuter train somewhere 30 uh, years I, ago. I yeah. absolutely uh, agree with that. So we have done kind of two concepts here. You either go to the uh, online travel agency and you will have to stick with this uh, situation where you might get lost in between, <laughs> if you yes. say so. On the other hand, you can go to an ordinary travel agency mm. just like the ones because they still exist uh, as they are uh, and uh, ask them and, and pay them for the service that they mm. are actually do. This is still a hand handicraft in many ways. Sort of. And I think we should emphasize that, that they do still exist. You don't yeah. have to turn to the OTAs unless you want to. And sometimes, depending on where you're going and what you're doing, it's not necessarily much more expensive to go through an ordinary travel agency um, to book your ticket. What's your feeling about going airline direct and hotel direct? Well, uh, depending on what, what trip you're going to make. If you're only flying Stockholm, New York round trip, no hotels, um, I would go airline direct. Um, if you're going to start adding hotels, a car, uh, a stopover somewhere, um, I would go to a travel agency to get the best options. They will, they're the expert. It's a craft to, to combine or put together a, an itinerary for someone. Um, so then I would go to a, a, a travel agency to have them put together a trip. Or maybe I should be honest here. Uh, you and me will probably do this on our own, having the experience we have from the travel industry. You know, it's the thing of trust someone else to do what you might know how to do yourself. But if you're not from the travel industry, if you haven't worked where we've worked, I would go to a travel agency to have them, they're the experts, to have them put together the best itinerary for you. Also, I think it's worth mentioning here that if you do and you're living in Scandinavia, I'm not sure exactly on what all countries here, but if you are booking several things in one go, the, the flight, the hotel, a car or whatever, uh, then you are covered uh, by insurances mm. in a way uh, called paket resolagen in Swedish. <laughs> I don't know how to <laughs> translate that into English, but that's a kind of good thing for, mm. for travelers to know about uh, in, in Scandinavia at least. Mm. Yes, exactly. And I, like you're saying, I'm not sure how that works. And it's probably different laws and different rules in different countries. But uh, we do have that in Scandinavia. So take advantage, advantage of that, uh, that you will be covered uh, if you book it like a package tour um, with a travel agency. I just uh, stumbled over a thing uh, uh, yesterday. Uh, it's something, it's a site called flightfree.co.uk. Uh, have you heard about that one? No, no, uh, I haven't seen that either. Uh, okay, so basically it's about not flying for a year. Yeah, and there are options here. You can actually sign up for life if you like. <laughs> oh, interesting. Uh, in, in a way. So, mm -hmm. well, yeah, I mean, for some people that will probably work um, uh, because they are not going, you know, uh, uh, anyway. It doesn't leave the continent and, and can actually use rail, uh, perhaps. Mm -hmm. um, so, so it might be something that we will see more of. And, uh, and we will come back to this and other questions uh, in a later episode around the environmental uh, questions, I would say. Around uh, travel. Uh, yeah, around travel. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, Johanna, uh, anything that you would like to add before we close the show for today? No, I don't no. think so. OTAs. 
Who Online cares? travel agencies. I asked, I, I told my husband I was going to join your pod today and I said, we're going to talk about OTAs. And he said, on time <laughs> something. I was like, no, no, you're not from the industry. <laughs> <laughs> we have we love these acronyms in this industry OTAs. yeah absolutely mm -hmm. absolutely and i know you have a favorite one from from canada oh <laughs> which one are you thinking of well any one of the, them the, 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 any one of the the airport yeah. codes yes yeah, that, oh, yeah, <laughs> they're the interesting airport codes yeah yes <laughs> right. if if someone out there could tell us why YYZ is the code for Toronto and the whole, um, you know, reason, reasoning behind that, that would be really great. That Just would be us. very interesting. Yes. It, it's not so easy to, to get hold of that information. Anyway, um, thank you, Johanna, for today. Uh, and uh, I hope I can come back to you when we're talking about rail and environment, etc. Absolutely. That would be great. And in the meantime, uh, folks, you can visit our site, travelemployees.com. And you can also join the group uh, we have in LinkedIn, the Travel Employees Networking Group that we have in now with more than 50,000 members uh, globally. Uh, there is a lot of uh, discussions going on. There is a lot of commercials, but also uh, polls that we are raising uh, every now and then. So uh, take care, everybody, and uh, let's uh, talk again in the next episode, uh, episode number four. Bye-bye.